St. Louis is a unique city. Um, uh, it's a, a multi-generational city in terms of congregations. And specifically here at Shari Tedek, I found a congregation. Um, I could not ask for a more wonderful group of people. I hear from people who visit on a regular basis how struck they are by the windows in this sanctuary because this is the place where people come for a life cycle event most often and uh, are visiting from another congregation in St. Louis or from out of town. And they're struck by this imagery because of course you can't face forward and engage in prayer without an entire wall of light. This room, for example, is supposed to represent, as far as I know, the splitting of the sea in terms of the, uh, the blue panels moving outwards. And in the center, there are all kinds of fascinating images, including in Hebrew, it looks like the first word of the Ten Commandments. It bends, it looks, um, it took me quite a while before I, it, it emerged. What is fascinating is that of all the various panes of glass and different colors and different textures that he used in this center image, that some of the colors uh, retain the light, as it were, longer than others. And so if it's gradually getting dark, certain panels get dark before other ones do. And especially on Yom Kippur, our most sacred day, which lasts until sundown, and we're fasting, and people are anticipating after a day of prayer when it's going to be over this fast, when the service is going to end, when they're going to be able to go and break their fast. And we look at that window, and gradually the only thing left is the eye of the bird on the top, which is the only thing you can see which gradually shuts, as it were, um, and we know that it will be very soon that we'll be able to sit down to a meal. It's, uh, it's really a very beautiful image, but it also engages people. For Yom Kippur, if nothing else, as people are hungry and they're tired and they just feel rotten sometimes on Yom Kippur afternoon, it's just something to look at. Now, six and a half years ago, when my mother passed away, it was, she passed away in August. Uh, in November, we had scheduled already uh, one of my teachers to come in to be a scholar in residence to speak about mysticism. Um, Pinchas Giller is his name from the University of Judaism, an expert on Kabbalah. Parenthetically, he said in one of his lectures, you know, there is a mystical tradition that every time a child says the mourner's Kaddish, for a parent, the soul rises. It was at that moment that my saying of Kaddish was transformed during that year. And I would sit in the chapel each morning, and each time I said Kaddish, my mother's soul would elevate for me. And I have a strong image on those windows throughout the year, gradually using the windows as the background and as the, um, as the physical symbol um, against which I could imagine an invisible soul rising. It was really a very beautiful and comforting experience. So the windows are more than just interesting, and they're more than just beautiful. They ask questions, as it were. You know, you sit and they ask you, so what does this mean? It's very interesting to go to a place in which windows can engage you and engage your mind and get you to think about well, what was in the mind of this artist, Rodney Winfield, as he was designing and creating these remarkable windows? What was he thinking? But the windows speak to us, not only because there are letters and words that actually have uh, verbal content, but because the images come to us almost as questions. I dare you to try to understand what I mean. Um, and not only that, but what you thought it meant before, it did, but it also means something else. Oh, I have been here almost 10 years and I don't begin to tire of them. 
And uh, I'm looking forward to many, many more years of watching those windows and to discovering so much more in those very rich symbols, in the textures and the various colors that are such a beautiful adornment for this congregation. But more than an adornment, it really helps to identify who we are in St. Louis and as Jews, for that matter, in the entire region.